Hi, this is Alex. You're watching Brilliant. In this video, I'm going to talk about the rainbows. I know that all of you have looked at the rainbow, but you probably haven't seen it. Looking at something is very different from seeing it. If you feel you have seen a rainbow, then test yourself by asking these five questions. One, what is the radius of the rainbow? Yes, it of course has a radius. Well, when you look at the rainbow, it looks like an arc in the sky, which is obviously a part of the circle. That means it should have a radius. Now, I don't want the radius in terms of the length. I want the radius in terms of the angle. Second question, what is the color sequence of the rainbow? Is it red outside or inside? Or will it depend upon the time you watch? When the rainbow appears, the brightness of the sky changes. Now the question is, in which part of the sky it is more bright and in which part it is more dark? 4. Can there be more than one rainbow? 5. If there is a second rainbow, what is its color sequence? Is it red outside or inside? If you know answers to none, you haven't really seen a rainbow. You have just looked at it. After watching this video, you will always remember the answers to these questions. So keep watching the video till the end. Before answering these five questions, I would like to answer the question for brilliance, which I asked it in the previous video. When the earth stops rotating, the value of G changes, but it doesn't change evenly at every point on earth. At poles, the value of G doesn't change at all. And at equator, the value of G is increased by 0.34%. It is due to the fact that the centrifugal force becomes zero when the earth stops spinning. So there is no change in weight at poles, but at equator, the weight is increased by 0.34%. Thus, if a person's weight is 60 kgs, then his weight at equator would be 60.25 kgs if the earth stops rotating. Now let's get into the journey of rainbow. First things first, there are two necessary conditions to witness a rainbow. One, there must be a white light hitting the water directly. And two, you must be in between the light source and the water. Now let's see how a rainbow is formed. Here is the water drop and assume it to be spherical. And assume some narrow beams of light striking the raindrop in this direction. Let one ray hits the drop at an angle of instance i and it bends while entering the drop with an angle of refraction r. It follows a rule called Snell's law while bending, which I am not going to discuss it right now, just take it as granted. Now when the light hits the inner surface of the drop, some of the light gets reflected. And when the light comes out of the drop, the light again bends following the same Snell's law and emerges out. Now, let D be the angle between the initial direction of the light and the emergent light. The maximum angle for D for red light is about 42 degrees and that for blue light is 40 degrees. So, when a white light enters the drop, it actually splits into various colors starting from red to blue. Now, this image can be rotated 360 degrees with this line as exile. So, when a white light hits the water drop, you'll get a cone of light. When you place a screen, what you'll see is this. At angles less than 40 degrees, you'll see a bright light. And at angles greater than 42 degrees, you'll see no light because light can't bend more than 42 degrees. Keeping all these in mind, let us assume a person standing on the ground and this be the direction of sunlight. Sun is behind the person. Now, when he looks at the water drops at an angle greater than 42 degrees, he could see no light. When he looks at angles less than 40 degrees, he observes a bright light. And when he looks at angles 42 degrees, he would see a red light. More interestingly, the blue light he sees in the rainbow is not reflected from the same water drop. It is from the other water drop looked at different angle of 40 degrees. With all these phenomena, he could see this, a rainbow, with a bright region below the rainbow and a less bright region above the rainbow. 
Extending this with two reflections inside the water drop, we can get a second rainbow whose colors are inverted compared to the first one and it is less intense. And the brightness level is highest in the lower region and lowest in the middle region. The radius of the rainbow is about 40 to 42 degrees. The red color is on the top of the rainbow and the color sequence is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. It is always more bright below the rainbow and less bright above the rainbow. It is possible to have a second rainbow and the color sequence is inverted for the secondary rainbow. Before ending the video, I have a question for brilliance. Is the light from the rainbow polarized? Answer it in the comment section if you are a brilliant. Thanks for watching. If you are still watching, that means you are interested in physics. So be sure to subscribe the channel and ring the bell icon to get notified on latest physics and math topics. Happy physics!